Hello everyone, Mr. Love here, coming to you from outside the diesel shop. Today we're just gonna do some basic operation of this Case 221E payloader that we have here at the school. So this is just to generally show you the controls and stuff like that and how to operate it. Always refer to the owner's manual and stuff like that or the operator's manual before you, you know, go out on any construction site or anything to run any of this equipment. Okay, so first we'll just start with a circle of safety. We'll walk all around our piece of equipment, looking on it, underneath it, and just looking for, you know, added dangers around the area, underneath the piece of equipment. A lot of times on construction sites and stuff, we might get, you know, animals and stuff that show up overnight, um, especially if you're, you know, working on farms and stuff like that. It might have a lot of cats or chickens or something that, you know, like to crawl up on the pieces of equipment and, you know, get warm for the night. So kind of walk around, just check everything out, maybe bang on the equipment a little bit, you know, if it's a spot where you have a lot of animals. I used to work on a lot of trash trucks and stuff, so we had cats and mice and stuff all the time up in our pieces of equipment. So we always went around, banged on them a little bit to get those scared out of there a little bit. Okay, so we're just doing a general inspection, just checking all our components and stuff like that, checking our frame of our loader, checking our hydraulic lines, checking our hydraulic cylinders, kind of just walking around, giving everything a quick little inspection here. Definitely check our tires, make sure they're fully inflated, both sides, and stuff like that. Check our cab glass, check our latches, just make sure all our controls and mirrors and everything are in good condition. Okay, next we'll go check our fluids. So here on our 221E, this is where our fuel tank is here. You can't really check it at this location um, unless you had, you know, a stick or something to stick down in there. We'd have to use our fuel gauge up there. But this is where you would fill that right here to take the cap off. You got to flip that out of the way and use the actual loader key in there to take the fuel cap off. Okay, we go around to the back. We have this little compartment right here. We just press this button. This will raise up out of our way. We raise it up all the way and it'll lock open for us there. Okay, we got this latched open here. And we're kind of just checking everything out. We're checking out all our engine bay area here. Checking our battery wiring. Make sure it's not rubbing on anything. Make sure everything's nice, tight, secured. Not... No signs of corrosion or looseness or anything. Grab a hold of the battery, shake it a little bit. Check out our engine components. Check out our hoses, our lines. Just basically all the stuff. Our fan belt. Got a couple different belts on this one. Looks like we have one that runs the AC and the other one runs the fan, the water pump. Okay, so kind of just check everything out here. If I wanted to fill my hydraulics, this is my hydraulic fill right here. The hydraulic check-in sight glass is over here on the side right here. If I went and looked on the side, I can see that my gauge says that I'm in the, you know, operating range right there. So we're good to go. Okay, so we want to also check our engine oil while we're underneath here. So take out a nice rag, pull out our dipstick, wipe it off, reinsert it, pull it out. And we want to make sure that we're above the add and below the max mark right there. Okay, so we wipe it off again, we put that back away, we're good to go there. Last thing we want to check is just our coolant level. We have a little expansion tank up in here. We can look at the expansion tank and just see that we're, you know, between the minimum and the maximum mark there. So we're good to go. Some of our equipment has air filter indicators and stuff like that on there. This one does not. Um, so periodically pull out the air filter and check that out. Okay, everything looks nice and Good under here, everything's a little dirty. This little piece of equipment definitely needs a good wash job, but other than that, everything looks pretty decent. If we wanna pull our hood down now, we gotta undo our latch right there and bring it down slowly while we're holding the latch, then we can bring it down the rest of the way. Okay, so we got that down, make sure that it's securely mounted again so it doesn't pop up while you're operating it. In our circle of safety, we'll check our other side here, make sure everything's good. On our operating checklist, we should be checking the lights and everything also. So we'll check our tires, lights, controls, frame, basically every component on here. Make sure we're ready for the day here. Okay, let's hop up in there and do some general checking out. Okay, before we go and operate for the day, um, make sure we have on our hard hat or safety glasses our high-vis vest. Make sure we have on long pants. 
either mechanics work pants or a good pair of jeans. Make sure you have on our steel toed work boots. Make sure you got a decent shirt on, especially if you're out in the elements or something. I like to have a long sleeve shirt I can pull down if I need to or put the sleeves up if need be. So whatever you're comfortable in for, you know, whatever you're operating in. Okay, so let's hop up in the loader. We'll check out the controls. Remember, whenever we get up in something, three points of contact. So two hands and one feet or two feet and one hand. Okay, so we're up with our piece of equipment here. First thing we always do is put on our seatbelt. Apply our seatbelt, we'll inspect it. Make sure it latches good. Okay, we're all securely in here. Before we fire it up, we'll just give it a once over, check everything out. Everything looks halfway decent. We'll get it fired up here. So the key here, the right hand side behind the joystick, behind the armrest, there's a little spot for the key. We'll put our key in, we'll turn it to accessory to start. Okay, with it on accessory, that's when we can check our fuel gauge, we can check our water temp, we can check our other gauges there. Make sure everything looks good, and I'll turn down the AC here a little bit. Okay, now we're good to fire it up. Okay, so we got it fired up here. We got a couple little joysticks in here to worry about. So this joystick right here, so my right hand joystick. So where my right hand kind of naturally falls in here, there's a joystick. If I pull back on the joystick, I can raise my bucket up. If I push forward on the joystick, it'll lower my bucket down. If I go right with the joystick, it'll tip my bucket forward. If I go left with the joystick, it'll tip it back. So left to tip back, forward to go down, back to go up, right to tip forward. Okay, also on top of this joystick is my forward and reverse. So on the same joystick as my controls, I have a forward and reverse. So an F to go forward, an N for neutral, and an R for reverse. So if I wanted to go forward, and make sure my bucket was up in the air, and then just push it up into forward. And there's a um, throttle pedal down here and a brake pedal over here. So I'd give it a little throttle after I was in the forward and release my parking brake. Release my parking brake, there's a hand parking brake right here. So I just lift up a little bit, push the button, and push it down. That allowed me to go into forward. I'll push the joystick forward, now I can move forward. I get a little throttle, move forward. I wanted to back up, go to neutral slowly, then in reverse, and I can back up. Okay, so I can lower it down here. I wanted to stop. My left foot's my brake pedal. My right foot's my throttle pedal. Okay, also over on here, I have turn signals. I got a left turn and a right turn. I can turn my four ways on if I'm in a tight little spot. Also, it's my wiper controls over here on my left of my steering wheel. I rotate the thing and turn my wipers on or the washers. Or I can blow the horn with a little button on the side there. Okay, so make sure our parking brake's set if we're done operating. Okay, and we would be good to shut it off. If you've never drove an articulated vehicle before, um, it could be a little weird um, when you first start out. So this pivots in the middle of the machine. So when we, you know, take turns and stuff, it's a lot different than anything you've experienced if you haven't drove anything articulated. So I'll show you. So I raise my parking brake, raise my bucket up, I go into forward. As you can see, I can really turn this you know, kind of weird here. They go in reverse. So you can see a pivot right in the middle, so it makes steering a little weird when you're not used to it. Okay, so those are the basic controls for our loader here. We do have a couple other little controls in here. There's another little joystick next to the main joystick here. That's so we can um, latch and unlatch our bucket so we can put different attachments on there. You know, we can put forks on there, other stuff. We have a snow blade and stuff for it for the winter time. So that's about all the controls that we need to know for today. Okay, so we'll shut it down, shut the key off. 
pull our key out to make sure our parking brake is set. Undo our seat belt. And we'll do our three points of contact to get down. Okay, so those are the basic controls for our Case 221E that we have here. Again, always refer to the owner's manual and stuff like that. And practice, practice, practice before you go out on the job site. So um, this is Mr. Love. Have fun out there. Stay safe. And give her diesel.